So markets are cheering this, but are there ramifications that they haven't thought about? Yes, uh, there are short term, uh, there's short term cheering in Turkey that the dollar came down. Uh, but uh, from mid to long term, uh, I think there are serious problems. Uh, one of the key uh, indicators of the problems to come is how Turkey's industrial and economic powerhouses uh, chose to vote. Uh, let's begin with the juggernaut Istanbul, you know, the capital of Turkey's economy. Uh, it, it, for the first time since Erdogan's mayoral victory in 1994, uh, Istanbul voted against him. And then when we take a look at five of the six largest cities, they also voted against the referendum. Moreover, uh, two thirds of Turkey's uh, GDP, you know, cities that produce two thirds of Turkey's GDP voted against the referendum. So it seems Erdogan, who uh, rode uh, the wave of economic success since 2002 into repeat electoral victories, uh, seems to be losing uh, Turkey's dynamic economic centers that are really concerned about foreign direct investment, export, uh, relations with the EU and the US. So I think that's going to be a key challenge for Erdogan. Are there things that Erdogan hasn't been able to do because he didn't have the power to better the lives of the average Turkish person, for example? I mean, we're looking at 25% youth unemployment, 13% unemployment overall. Is he looking to maybe turn that around by, by taking some more power? Uh, if we take a look at the correlation between good governance and Erdogan's economic performance, uh, in his early days in office, he had the best economic performance, and that's when uh, he was more in a governing mode, where he did allow some opposition input, where he did spend some time building consensus. But the moment he started centralizing his power, uh, first around his own party and then around his own persona, uh, Turkey's economic prospects started coming down. So I think it's less about Erdogan's ability to dictate his will uh, and, and more about Turkey's severe deficiency in, in governance. And I think a centralized presidential system uh, will make things worse as Erdogan's inner circle is narrowing and he's closing himself even uh, to critics within his own party. Before the ballot, foreign investment in Turkey's bond market was at a five-year low. What makes you think that FDI won't return in great, you know, in massive amounts now that Erdogan is going to probably install himself as, you know, a, a much a leader with much, much greater powers. We had an investor this morning who said that now, it's only now that Turkey actually looks investable. Now, I think one of the key uh, issues for investors, especially for uh, Western sources of FDI, is whether there is rule of law, due process. For example, a very important factor is uh, property rights, whether um, your, your corporation will be taken over, whether its property will be confiscated, whether there will be state-appointed trustees. And for the time being, that is the business environment in Turkey, and that really scares of a lot of the Western investors. And in fact, when we take a look at the bottom lines, we're seeing that uh, FDI from the West is uh, on, on the fall, and Turkey is trying to make up by getting new investors from the East, from you know, Asia, from the subcontinent, from the, the Gulf countries. Uh, but ultimately, these are different kinds of FDI. And what Turkey is really missing is the know-how, the expertise of the, the R&D and innovation in, in intensive uh, Western FDI. That has really been a, a boost to Turkey's economy in the early years of the Erdogan rule. So I think uh, as Erdogan turns more toward and kind of state slash crony capitalist regime in Turkey, he will scare off Western FDI.